uh, I thought I'd give you some background of True to Life books. And my adventure started over 20 years ago when I wanted to see the mountain gorillas in Rwanda in Africa. It was a very difficult time because the terrible war was just starting, but I thought it was my only opportunity to see the mountain gorillas. I hiked up the mountain with my guide, and when I came face to face with a big mountain gorilla, a big silverback, that moment changed my life and my career because my guide said there were only 600 mountain gorillas left in the whole world. I thought that was so sad, only 600 mountain gorillas left in the whole world. So when I came down the mountain, I thought I want to do something to help. So I decided I wanted to make books on endangered animals for children. But how was I going to do that? I, uh, I thought it was going to be easy, but of course it wasn't. I knew that I didn't want to cartoon an endangered animal. I knew I didn't want to add illustrations. I wanted to make a real book, a real book so children could see the real animals in the wild. So my adventures began when I went up to Wulong, up in the mountains of China, uh, to make Ping Ping the Panda Book. And I've got a very, very special boyfriend in my life. His name is Muse. And he was rescued in the Congo from being eaten by my friends who live in Africa. And they've been looking after Muse. Uh, he lives with them. And every time I went to Africa, I went in and played with Muse and uh, stayed with my friends for a few days. So he was very special because he taught me how to behave when I was with primates. And this was a special book I did for Dr. Jane Goodall. Uh, she had a chimp sanctuary in Uganda, a very dangerous place to visit at the time. But I went there to make this book and dedicated it to Dr. Jane Goodall. And of course, that knowledge helped uh, when I went to Borneo. I went in the jungle uh, with my guide, and after a week, I went to a sanctuary that looked after a lot of little babies that had lost their mothers. And I wanted to show you this because uh, you can see that little a uh, orangutan baby sucking his thumb, just like a human baby. So primates' DNA is very, very similar to humans. I went to Africa 11 times, but it's wonderful following herds of elephants. I've even adopted some elephants, which I'll show you later. Getting used to very dangerous lions walking past my jeep. This book was very important because rhinos are very, very endangered. So I had to find the black rhino, the white rhino, and then I went to India to photograph the Indian rhino. When I was talking at schools, the children would often say to me, make a book about a zebra. And I thought, I see lots of zebras out on the plain, hundreds and hundreds of them. And I didn't think, any were endangered, <laughs> sorry, um, but then I did my homework and I found out that two types of zebras were very endangered. One is called the gravy zebra, has great big fluffy ears, and the other is called the mountain zebra. So I went back to Africa and I made this special book, Ziggy the Zebra, the most magic moment of my life. On my next trip to Africa, I said to Carl, cheetahs are territorial, aren't they? So do you think we could find that cheetah again? And he said, come on, let's try. So we walked in the same area and I heard a cheetah purring before I saw it. I gave my camera to Carl, I knelt down. The cheetah came out from the bush and allowed me to put my hand on its throat just to feel the vibration of the purring on my hand. A second cheetah came up, 
a little bit nervous. You can see he's just swung around uh, with the clicking of the camera. But that was the most wonderful moment of my life. And I made Chipper the Cheetah shortly after that. Now this book took 15 years. I took photographs of leopards in Africa, but not enough to tell their story. Then I went to Sri Lanka and right down the bottom to a place called Yala Park and managed to finish my book there. The lovely meerkats who live in the Kalahari Desert. It's wonderful watching meerkats because they have a lovely family group. They always look after each other. Now to India for Timber the Tiger. And Kola the Koala. Uh, I made this book about 20 years ago and I've reprinted it many, many times, updating it as I went. But when I go to China, uh, I like to show my video of Kola the Koala. Now with all those books, you can actually go on to my website and there are 15 free educational videos and you can watch the animals running around in their natural habitat in the wild. I also have all the videos on YouTube, so you have to type in uh, the full name of the animal by Jan Latter and you can see the videos there as well. This is my latest book in the animal series. A friend told me about this wonderful big sloth. So Sleepy the Sloth went all the way to China with me last year. Uh, we started off in Singapore and we talked to um, the children in the Australian school in Singapore. And then we went to Hong Kong, but it was in October last year when the terrible riots were happening. And I was in the taxi one day, coming back from talking all day at the school and then signing books. And I was happily tired, sitting in the back of the taxi. And out the window, I saw a Chinese man who was very angry. He was shouting and screaming in Chinese. And I thought, Oh my goodness, uh, that anger was so awful to see. So I decided to lift up Sleepy the Sloth and give a little wave to that angry man. And I looked back as the taxi was setting off and he was laughing. And I thought, how wonderful. A sloth toy defused that young man's anger. So he's very special. My latest book that I made last year, Adventures in the Wild. 